Hey, what is going on, everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome to video number six, maybe? <laughs> welcome to another video in the Blender tutorial series. Man, I'm losing count. I mean, not that it's that high, but we're getting there, right? Uh, I believe this is video number six, if I'm counting correctly, which may be possible that I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyhow, up to this point, we learned lots and lots of things. Uh, and like last video, I can assure you that we do have an end goal in mind. We will be building something and we'll be doing that soon. So get excited, right? So hopefully you're, you're learning lots and lots. Uh, there's a lot to learn. In the video that I have for you today, we're going to be covering what I believe to be the last of the basic mesh editing operations, okay? So up to this point, we went through extrude, delete, Build, join, and lots and lots of other things. All right, so we're going to be covering the last one today, maybe four in total, and we are going to be starting with what is called a loop cut. All right, you may hear some people uh, describe this as or refer to it as loop cut and slide, or they like to call them edge loops. All right, now an edge loop would basically be a loop that a, a single edge that continued all the way around your object, right? So you should be able to, to press Alt. And if you're in edge select, which I'm not, uh, selecting alt or pressing alt and selecting your edge, all the edges all the way around should, should light up. All right. And this one did not. So these are obviously not edge loops. It's just a simple edge. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, getting into, uh, loop cuts. Now loop cut is just another way, uh, to subdivide your surface and by subdivision, meaning breaking it down into smaller, more manageable pieces, right? For whatever reason, lots of reasons you're going to want to do that. Uh, and this is a way to achieve that. Now, two different ways that you can get into the loop cut. One is through the toolbar that you see over here where it says loop cut. And the other is through control R because of course it has a hotkey. <laughs> I mean, everything does. All right. So I'll show you both methods today because there's a difference between the two. Control R, like I said, gets you into the loop cut. All right. And you can see by hovering over the different edges, uh, we have this uh, yellow indicator that shows up. All right. And it's just asking you which edge you want to put it on. Uh, once you click, left click, that is, that gets you into what's called the slide feature. Okay. So you can, you can pick where on that face uh, or on the cube you want your cut to be. All right, so if you're already in the slide function and you decide, you know what, I'd rather have it in the middle, all right, instead of trying to eyeball it, get it into the exact middle, you'll you'll never be able to get it there. It's just impossible. I mean, I can do it because, you know, me. <laughs> um, but it's hard, man. You just can't do it. So right-click, okay? Right-click, well, it doesn't cancel the loop cut. It cancels the movement, and it defaults to the middle of the object. All right, so a couple other things you can do here, all right? So control R again, pick my edge, is you can you'll use your scroll wheel to select the number of cuts that you would like, okay? So depending on how many cuts you want, you can use your scroll wheel to achieve that, right? Left click, place it, and you're good. Now with any other operation that we do in the lower left-hand corner here, you can see we have some settings that we can change. The first one of them being the number of cuts. So if you want more than two cuts, we can change that. Smoothness. Now smoothness is a little different because I don't know why they consider it being smooth. Uh, but if you were to change this value, right? So play around with it. You can see what happens there, right? Uh, and then factor, if you decide that your cuts are not exactly where you want, uh, you can shift them left or right using factor, okay? All right, now the difference between a loop cut on the toolbar, right, is one, you can no longer use your scroll wheel, right? It doesn't work that way for some reason. It just doesn't. But you can make multiple cuts, like, rapidly. So you can go from one to the other to the other, you know, and you can just keep, you know, you can cut like crazy, all right? So that's the difference between a toolbar. Uh, otherwise, it works exactly the same as it does with Control R. Now, if you wanted to delete one of your loop cuts, like you see here, okay, I have one highlighted. Uh, well, first, let's let's unhighlight it just just to make this a little bit not more interesting. But you can see what happens if you need to delete one. Now, you know 
how to select an edge loop, right? Using Alt, that will select the entire loop all the way around, pressing your Alt key. Okay, so select one of your loops. Now, normally you would either hit X to bring open your delete menu, or you would just hit delete to bring up your delete menu. Um, and then instead of picking edge, which I would think you would normally be inclined to do, at the very bottom, we have edge loops where you can delete an edge loop, okay? And there you go, deleted your edge loop. Now, the thing about menus, all right, and it's just a side note, uh, your menus are constantly changing depending on what mode you're in. So you'll have a different menu for, you know, being in base mode compared to edge mode, compared to being in vertex select. Uh, you'll have a different menu whether you're in object mode or if you're in edit mode. Uh, it all depends. There's tons of different menus for tons of different things. Now, all of these menus, when I right click, you can, they're all right here. Okay, so this face, if you look at extrude faces, vertex, right? So when I right click in any one of these modes, this is generally the menu that shows up. So you can access any one of those menu items through the top as well. All right, so that is loop cut. Like I said, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just a way to subdivide your model, you know, as, as needed, right? And you can control that subdivision, the placement of it. Uh, and stuff like that. So if I was to continue subdividing this on every face, right? Kind of like what I have here, all right? Now let me back up. So you see what I have there. It looks just, just four subdivisions per side. Okay, let me get out of here. Boy, okay, there we go. There is an easier and faster way to do this. So I'm gonna select A, I'm gonna hit A for select all, right click, and we have a menu item for subdivide, okay? or I can just right click S for subdivide. All right, and you can see I have exactly what I just had, right? Four subdivisions per side. Uh, it's just an easier, quicker way to subdivide your surface. Now you don't have to subdivide the whole entire model. You can subdivide just a single face, right? That easy, and of course, just like the other one, you have menu items so you can control the number of subdivisions. Again, the smoothness, if you wanna you know, doof, 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 doof. <laughs> so it doesn't take much to keep me amused, as you can tell. Um, but anyhow, play around with, with your settings, right? That's how you, you kind of learn what they do. All right. Uh, one interesting thing for this cube here, let me back up. And it's just, I find it interesting. So I'm going to subdivide and I'm going to turn. Oh, that's the other thing. Looking at this cube, you can see how wonky it came up. You have to watch when you change some of your settings. Uh, and you go right back into another subdivision, it will retain some of those settings. So you get something goofy like this. But if I turn my number of cuts all the way up and I jack up my smoothness, ooh, <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Just turn your uh, your cube into a sphere, right? So that's that's what smoothness, I guess that's that's how it smooths things out, right? It, it, it And it smoothed it. It did not lie. It is definitely smooth. All right, so let's, let's put that back to zero. Okay, so subdivision, like I said, not much to it. It's just another way uh, to sub, you know, it's like loop cut, just a different way to subdivide your surface. Um, I mean, you could do that through joints. You can do that through bisecting, through a knife. You can, so like I said, there's lots of ways to achieve the same result. Uh, and subdivision and loop cut are just, just one of them. Uh, now, those two tools you are going to be using a lot. Uh, like I said, all of these you're going to be using a lot. That's kind of why I'm going over them, uh, because they're your everyday items. They're things that, you know, in every model that you do, chances are you're always going to be using a loop cut or you're going to be subdividing something. Uh, now subdivision, uh, doesn't work just on faces. Okay. Now I, I know that I use faces as an example for a lot of these. Uh, like I know the last video I went through dissolve, we learned how to dissolve and I used the edge. As an example, Dissolve does work on vertices and it also works on faces, all right? So I need to keep that in mind. I always forget to mention that it works on all three, all three selection types, not just faces, all right? So I could actually pick an edge if I wanted to, all right? And my subdivision still comes up in the menu. I can subdivide that and you can see I have a green side and a blue side now. And if I go into vertex mode, you can see there is an extra vertex, okay? Because it's subdivided that, that edge. Now with 
the vertex, okay, there's still subdivide in the menu, but when you subdivide, it doesn't do anything. Now, it's only a single point in space, so of course it's not actually going to subdivide anything. Uh, the reason it, it still goes through the motions is because you actually you can subdivide vertices, uh, but you have to have more than one. So if I was to subdivide now, you can see what it did. It actually added another point in between these two. Because when you have two vertices selected, in effect, you you basically selected also that edge. Because that's all all of 3D model is, is a collection of vertices, right? It's it's a point in space. It's you use your X, Y, and Z coordinates. That vertice ends up as a point in space, and it's connecting the dots from there. And you connect the dots with edges. All right. And then once you have enough of them, like if you have a quad or a tri, uh, you have, you know, enough vertices that you can actually fill that space. Right. So it takes at least at least three, three vertices to be able to fill. All right. So that that's why you, you're able to subdivide that vertice because in effect, you're, you're selecting that entire line. Right. So to reinforce that, if I was to select all four of these vertices, Okay, now I selected all of these edges and also the face because I have four vertices selected. And if I was to right click subdivide and you can see, there we go. Basically the same, we, the same thing we would get if we subdivided just the face. All right, uh, this, this should be making a lot of sense to you guys if you've been practicing and playing around with some of our previous lessons. Okay, um, and that, that's my hope, you know, that's my goal. Or this whole series is that you guys learn something or at least get more comfortable with Blender. All right. Because there's a lot of great things you can do with this. I mean, it's capable of so many things. And there's so many things we're not even going to touch on a fraction of them, but we will be covering the basics. All right. So loop cut and subdivide that. That was pretty easy, right? So not much to it. Uh, to keep going here, I'm making good time. I want to get into beveling. All right, so we can bevel edges. Now, I'm sure you probably even know how to do this. Now, this will go by selecting an edge. Uh, I believe there's a bevel tool down here. Yep, there's, you can bevel from the toolbar, or you can hit Control B for bevel. Now, when you bevel, depending on where your curse, cursor is at, this is the same thing for scale, rotate. Uh, you want to watch the placement of your cursor. It makes it a lot easier to do beveling. But if I hit Control B and pull back on this, okay, you can see what's happening. It's, it's affecting my edge. Now, same thing as loop cut, I can control the number of, uh, I guess, edges, I guess you can say, or the subdivisions on that bevel. So instead of going from a completely flat look, right, I can start to get more of a rounded look, right? And obviously things with, you know, a rounder, you know, a rounder face look a little bit better than just that, that straight edge. All right. Now, again, you don't need to select just a single edge, right? So you can select all edges and you can bevel. Okay. And you get what we have here. And again, you can round your corners off a little bit, give them nice, nice, fancy rounded look. Uh, and then if you were to select everything and go into shade smooth, if I can find that here somewhere, you might have to do that through. Yeah, I might have to do that through my, uh, through my object menu. See, this is the problem, not the problem, but with, with so many uh, hotkeys, that's what I wanted to say, with so many hotkeys available, you kind of forget where things are at in the menus and you can't find things. All right, so now I can shade smooth. All right, so you can see, it gave it a, a, a much nicer look, right? With the, the rounded edges and you know everything looks looks really good. Okay, now the thing to keep in mind now, there's, there's a lot you're going to learn when you're modeling for the video game pipeline, right? If you're, if you're modeling for video games. When people are creating scenes, right, for whatever reason, maybe it's, you know, an advertisement, television commercial, what have you, uh, they really have no restrictions as far as what they can do. You know, the, the level of detail could be astronomical. You don't have that luxury with video games, right? Now, like, same thing with making maps, you know, uh, you want to you want to save on your your system resources, right? You want to keep everything to a minimum. That's why I always try to you know encourage these guys to use mostly base game models and stuff like that uh, because it it keeps the overhead low. 
All right. And the same thing goes with modeling. Now, something with as simple as a beveled edge is just adding, you know, more geometry. Now, a straight edge like we have here, you know, is is obviously much better than, you know, multi edges. So let's let's kind of back this up with an example here. So if I want to go up here and I'm going to my overlay is going to turn on my statistics. Now, I usually have my statistics turned on. And I'm usually looking at triangles is basically what I'm looking at. Well, I look, I look at the whole thing with triangles. Now, I don't know if this is going to change as I go, uh, but I'm looking at 12 tri triangles. So you can kind of see up. Oh, so you can see that change to 16. Just by adding that one cut, we went to 16 triangles. Now, if I really want to, you know, get that up there. Okay. Now you can see them up to 92. I went from 12 to 92 just by rounding that corner, all right? It's insane. And it adds up super, super quick. So when you're modeling for video games, you need to be conscious of your geometry, okay? Of, of adding, adding like extra faces and vertices where they're not absolutely needed, all right? Now, when we get into texturing and stuff, this is gonna make a lot more sense because a lot of these things you can pull off through normal maps, displacement maps, uh, stuff like that, you know, ambient occlusion. Uh, so there's a lot of things we can do to trick the eye into thinking something is three-dimensional when it's actually not. All right. So we keep our models down, down to a basic level, right? Not crazy on the detail. Uh, we want it to be light on resources. When it gets into the game, we don't want it struggling and, and killing our FPS because we got, you know, crazy with our models. All right, and I've seen a few today. You know, I've downloaded some mods that I was like, holy Christ, this thing is massive. All right, and, and there's a reason, you know, and it's just like mapping where people, you know, they learn a little bit, you know, they get gung-ho and they throw a map out there, barely knowing what they're doing. I mean, they know enough to make a map, but not enough to like do it properly the way it should be done. And it's the same thing with modeling. And I've made the same mistake myself. In the beginning, I was putting stuff together. I'm like, man, this is awesome. Until I got it in the game, I'm like, holy cow, this thing is massive, right? And it, it needed to be cut down. And I'm going to show you ways to keep that to a minimum. But things like bevel, before you get super crazy, I want to just put it out there because people tend to do that. They're like, oh, this is great. And you want to round every single edge that you see, but it's just not necessary. All right. You know, use it <laughs> with a preponderance of caution, okay? Um, so like I said, you can select this whole thing. You can select just parts of it if you want to. And that's control B. Uh, to bevel. Uh, now the same thing, I think I showed you this on the last video or one of the last videos. Uh, they have something called clamping where you can see how I can basically turn this inside out. I can bevel it so far that it just keeps going and going. Now, even though it's an interesting shape, uh, you don't want to do that. So clamping puts a limit on how far, you know, you could actually bevel that, which, which is good. And I use clamping a lot. So I know that I'm not overdoing it because it, it can create issues uh, later down the line, uh, whether you know it or not. You may not see it now, but, you know, it, it could happen that eventually, you know, you run into some sort of issue. All right. And so, like I said, the nice thing about beveling uh, and being able to select multiple edges is it keeps everything uniform, right? So instead of having to do everything uh, individually, you know, you know that, you know, all of your cuts are the same, right? The same values. They all look like they're all, it's a uniform look to it, right? Uh, instead of doing things one by one by one. That's the nice thing about making multiple selections. Okay. So there's really no fancy trick to beveling. So a lot of people are like, do I select the faces and do I, do I bevel from there? All right. Just keep in mind the way that things select, right? So you look what I'm getting here with just the top, that top face, right? It's selecting all all top of the all four of the top edges okay if i control z i go into edge mode and i select all four of the top edges go into bevel it's the same thing all right so i think a lot of people get confused over like what should i be in should i be selecting the edge should i be selecting the face just remember it all comes down to vertices right so if you have two vertexes you basically have an edge because there's going to be an edge that connects those vertexes or vertices. If you have three vertices that are all connected, then you have a face. 
All right. So they, they're all, it's all the same. So by selecting this top face, in essence, you're also selecting all four of the edges and all four of those vertices. All right. And the same thing, if you were to select all four of the vertices, you are basically selecting all four edges and the face as well. All right. It's just the way that everything is interconnected and the way that it works. So hopefully you can avoid some confusion there as far as like, I don't know if I should be in edge mode or should I be in face mode? I don't know what to do. And, and that's, that's it. There really is. It's not, not as complicated as, as a lot of people might think that it is. Right. And you can come up with some pretty interesting designs if, if you really, really try. Alrighty. So the next thing I have on a list, and this may be the last thing actually is inset. Now inset is pretty neat. If you remember the last video that we had, or one of the last videos, uh, I put it, went into edge or not edge mode. I went into an extrude and right into scale. All right. And I was able to kind of pull things in like so, and then expand it like so. All right. So that, that was nice. Uh, but there's a, an easier way to do it, and that's by inset. Now, over here on your keyboard, you can see inset, or on the toolbar, you can see inset faces, or you can hit control, or not control I, just I on your keyboard, and you can pull your face in, right? So effectively, I got the same thing that I just had. Now, you're probably asking yourself, if I can do this through, you know, extrude and scale, why do I even need inset? All right, so let's say I wanted to inset all of these faces, okay? So I pick all these faces and I want to inset them. Now I would have to extrude scale, extrude scale, extrude scale. I'd have to keep going through that routine over and over and it would get pretty monotonous pretty fast. I wouldn't want to do that. Now I can select, you know, this, this whole entire thing. Now the difference is if you just hit I, oops, sorry. If you just hit I, you'll see that nothing happened, right? See how nothing's happening here? If you hit I a second time, now you can do all of your faces or individually. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a better example, a better example of why that is. So let me delete this cube. All right. And I'm going to shift a, and I'm going to make a uh, plane. Okay. And then I'm going to scale this plane up big enough that you can see it. Like so. Okay. And I am actually going to, subdivide this. Now the thing with subdivisions too, is once I subdivided, I could actually turn around and just subdivide again, right? And then add another, you see what I mean? You can just keep going and going and going indefinitely if you want to. All right. So I subdivided the surface and I forget what I was going to show you. Uh, <laughs> it had something to do with, oh my goodness, I actually did forget. Um, <laughs> It was inset, I remember. All right, so if we take something, we're looking at this, okay? This could be any number of things. I run into this a lot when I'm doing Windows. If I get into face select, so if I pick all four of these these uh, these uh, faces here, right? Hit I for inset. Oops, it's not the way I wanted it. Okay, the first inset, it's going to inset them as as one item. Right. So maybe it's like a window pane or something. It just happens to be subdivided. But when you inset, you know, you want to do that as, as one. So maybe when you extruded, you know, you had something that looked like that. But like you said, maybe it's like a window pane or something where you don't you don't want it to subdivide as one big square. You want all of these squares individually. So like I said, the first time you click I is going to get you into the overall a collective you know, inset hitting I a second time is going to break that down into the individual parts of, of that, that subdivision. Okay. And then from there you could eat and, you know, extrude and do whatever you needed to do. So you're not already creating a little city right there, right? Make some a little bit taller than others. Make that one a little bit taller. All right. Like that. Okay. See, so you can see that's pretty cool. All right. And like I said, blender just comes down to the limits of your imagination, right? So if you can think it, that there's a way to build it. I'm sure of it. All right. What else do I got for you? Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, inset. Now inset's going to come in really, really handy for lots and lots of things, right? Just like all of these tools are, you know, not one of these, these tools that I'm showing you is not going to get used on a very frequent basis. Okay. Inset. I use a, a ton when I'm doing windows, 
All right, windows, doors, because uh, this very easily right here could have been a window. Now I would just select, I'd select all my outside edges like so, and I would actually extrude them a little bit, and that would be my, my door frame or my window frame. Uh, window, you could inset just a tiny bit, or not inset, but extrude, like recess it a little bit if you wanted to. And I'm going to show you all this when we start working on whatever prefab it is that we decide to make, right? There is tons and tons of uses for these things. Uh, now, the thing with inset is you can inset again. You can keep going. So I can inset this edge and inset again, inset again, right? It helps from further out. Inset again, and again, and again, and again. All right. So if you wanted to, I'm getting a face select here. Am I on face select? No, I'm not. I uh, didn't do what I wanted it to. I was hoping it would have selected that whole ring all the way around. And it did not. It does that. Yeah, but an easy way, like this is where all these multiple selections are going to come into play. You could either use select and or select. Why do we always call it select? Shift and select them individually. Okay. Or you can use control and you can just kind of go around that way. And oops, that one cut across. So now I just want to start that over. Sometimes it's easier just to select them individually instead of getting all fancy with things, right? So like I said, I mean, you can, you can tell just by, you know, what we're doing that there's so many different ways to achieve even the most basic things, right? You can come up with some, either the most basic, you know, basic designs or the most complex. And you're doing that through basic operations. That's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> Didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. Um, but anyhow, that is inset. You know, like I said, as we get into, you know, building our model, I'm going to show you a lot more ways, uh, many more ways that you can use these things, right? And put it to a, a practical use. It comes in very, very handy, like I said. And uh, I just need you guys to be aware of it before we make it that far into our series. All right. So I believe those are the last things that I wanted to go over. Um, in our next video, we're probably going to start getting into some common modifiers. All right, so we're going to start doing a little bit of work over here. Uh, and just the basic modifiers, ones that you're going to use a lot, because I want you guys to be familiar with these things uh, before we get into them. I don't you know, want you stumbling around and just trying to figure out things on your own. It's, it's good to go in, you know, knowing a few things, right? <laughs> All right, so like I said, you know, as I usually do, I hope that this made some, some sense to you. Any questions, obviously hit me up in the comments. I'll answer them the best that I can. Um, and that is it. Like I said, that, that was the last of our basic mesh editing operations and, and practice, practice, practice. It makes perfect. Uh, and you know, make sure that you explore other tutorials as well. There's so much to learn with blender. It's just insane. And like I said, there is no shortage of tutorials out there. So I'm going to leave it at that. Right, we're gonna wrap this one up, get ready for the next video. And with that being said, I am Bauer Brown, and I will see you on the next one.